Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ah, come on, come on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, I was not expecting this, um, but first I have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing me with this opportunity to stand up on this stage. I've been attending these conferences since I can remember. And um, the thing I remember is running up and down the halls trying to avoid my umi so that she wouldn't snatch me up and bring me into one of the lectures to sit down. But um, times have changed. Never in my life did I imagine standing on this stage. Um, inshallah, what I say can resonate. And um, in order to give you a brief uh, introduction of myself and my story, I'm gonna play this video. It was a historic night in Springfield, and for the state as well. By the end of this season, this young lady won't have just broken the record, she will have shattered it. It was a packed house tonight at Commerce High School as parents, students, and teachers wanted to watch for themselves as senior Bilkis Abdul Qadir blew Rebecca Lobo's scoring record out of the water. It's really cool to be able to set a new record in Massachusetts, and hopefully it can be up there for a couple of years, but hopefully when I get maybe to Rebecca Lobo's, where she's at in life, I can see a young, younger person break it. Another young woman who has thrived in her school is Bilkis Abdul Qadir. She's not even five five. Where's Bilkis? Right here. Stand up, Bilkis. Just so that we, I want everybody to know. She's got heels on. She's five five. <laughs> Bilkis broke Rebecca Lobo's record for the most points scored by any high school basketball player in Massachusetts history. <laughs> She recently told a reporter, I'd like to really inspire a lot of young Muslim girls if they want to play basketball. Anything is possible. They can do it too. As an honor student, as an athlete on her way to Memphis, Bilkis is an inspiration not simply to Muslim girls. She's an inspiration to all of us. For the first time in her playing career, Bilkis Abdul Qadir has hit a roadblock. All these years that I've played, you know, and I finally get to a point where I can get there and I get stopped. You know, I can say I, I've never really had any type of adversity like as big as this one. Due to her religious beliefs, the 2014 Missouri Valley Conference Newcomer of the Year is required to change her attire as she gets older. As Muslim women, once you reach the age of womanhood, we have to cover our bodies, hair, all the way down. And um, we do it for modesty, for protection. Basketball's governing body, FIBA, has a rule that bans players from wearing equipment that may cause injury to others, including headwear, hair accessories, and jewelry. My head covering is, goes against their, their religious views that they, they want to keep the court or the games religiously neutral. Recently, FIBA's policymaking board has agreed to review the rule on August 27th. The decision to review comes in light of the United States Olympic Committee and India's government calling for an end to the ban. I just want to be able to play in a pro game, you know, because I know I have, I feel like I have the ability to do so. And I just, that's been my dream since I was younger. Oh, shukran, jazakallah. Um, as many times as I've, as I've watched this video, um, I still get a little emotional. And it still kind of hurts my heart because I've been dreaming to play pro my whole life. And um, little did I know that my hijab, the same thing that made me, you know, accomplish things that I've accomplished so far, alhamdulillah, meeting the president of the United States was the same hijab that was gonna prevent me from, from reaching my dream. And um, it, just, it just took me for a loop. And I began to question a lot of things. And wallahi, I began to question my deen. I began to question wearing my hijab. And overall, I kind of felt like I lost my identity in a way. Um, basketball, it was more and is more than just a sport to me or just a game. 
it was a part of me, it was a part of my identity. And when it was removed, you know, it kinda, it kinda hurt. And the thing is, even though I always look different from my teammates or the opponents that I've played, um, it made me fit in. I would walk in gyms and literally the whole arena would look like, who is this girl? Why does she have all of these clothes on? And I would get these crazy looks. I would see people whisper to the person next to them to kind of make them look like, what is going on? But as soon as I picked up the ball and I did a, a good move or made a few shots, they're like, oh man, she can hoop. What's, what's going on? And that opened doors, you know, people started to ask questions. And then that gave me the opportunity to give Dawa. You know, it, it opened doors for me to spread the word of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I fulfilled one of my duties as a Muslim. And, you know, I loved when that happened. So then when FIBA comes around, you know, I don't want to say that they were the devil or anything like that, but they started to make me question a lot of things. And there's no way that I ever wanted to question Islam or wearing hijab or, or my deen. And wallahi, over the time, over this past year that I didn't get to play, I've never made so much dua in my life. I remember I would pray and I would be in sujood for so long that I would literally feel the blood rushing to my brain. That's how much guidance I was asking for because I was lost inside. I really was. Alhamdulillah, Allah opened up another door for me by using basketball. And um, now I'm on this path to where I have the ability to break these stereotypes and these negative views, especially for us Muslim women. We're the ones who represent Islam. When we walk outside, people know that we're Muslim. And so we have to stay in strong in our faith. And our brothers, our husbands, our, our fathers, you guys have to support us because you don't know what it's like to walk outside all fully covered. You have no idea. So before I leave you, um, I just want to give a message, you know, never to conform. Um, I read a quote that said, conformity is a prison. And the prison that I speak of is this dunya. This is a test. FIBA was my test. And Allah tested me in my faith to see what I was going to do. Was I going to take it off to go play for an organization who didn't want me to play in the first place? No, not at all. But now I can break barriers, inshallah, for young Muslims who may want to play tennis, volleyball, basketball, or for just Muslims in general who want to follow their dreams. You don't have to give up your deen to follow your dream. And um, overall, I started um, an organization type of a campaign called Muslim Girls Hoop 2. And um, you guys, it's just to raise awareness for discrimination of all religion and sport. Um, my Umi and my sister are over there in the back corner and they're selling these shirts. Um, inshallah, if you do buy one, please take a picture of it and send it to FIBA.com, F-I-B-A.com. And I, need the, I just need you all support. So inshallah, um, you enjoyed this. Shukran, assalamu alaikum.